The World Bank has listed Nigeria among countries to be negatively impacted by soaring global energy prices due to the ongoing Russia-Ukraine war. According to National Bureau of Statistics, average retail price of automotive gas oil, otherwise known as diesel, increased by 181% from 238.82, that is 238 Naira, 82 Kobo, in May 2021 to 671 Naira, 8 Kobo, in May 2022. Also, the prices of gas and kerosene have gone up by 88% in 12 months according to NBS. Recall energy prices uh, soared in the third quarter of last year and are expected to remain elevated in 2022, adding to global inflationary pressures and potentially curbing growth in energy importing countries, uh, including Nigeria, according to the World Bank data. All right, let's look at the impact of the rising cost of energy on Nigeria economy and ways to reduce the debilitating effect on the populace. All right, let's bring in our guest now, Mr. Balazaka is petroleum engineer, chartered accountant. He joins us via the telephone. Thank you for your time, sir. We appreciate you for coming. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, give us an overview of the consequences uh, of the cost of uh, energy and the fact that, yes, some people say it's a global issue, but pe particularly as it relates to Nigeria. Uh, what are your thoughts on the rising cost of energy? Uh, thank you very much sir, for that excellent question and how you try to intelligently segment and differentiate it. Some people are saying it's a global issue, but we need to look at it in the context of Nigeria. In the context of Nigeria, that aspect of global issue is completely wrong in the context of nigeria it is due to lack of planning it is due to lack of planning and having visionary leaders that we are supposed to be visionary and futuristic in their thinking so let me explain the general concern when there is energy crisis like this regardless of whether it's nigeria or the global community Whenever you have energy crisis, mm. this first thing that will happen is the usual aggregate mobility of activities that will lead to the growth of gross domestic products or GDP of different economies will collapse, especially the economies that are vulnerable. The reason is because when you talk about growth, whether global growth or national growth, the first thing you look at is security. Mm. Because once you have security, that means people, uh, investors can invest. Investors' uh, investment will be saved. People can commute. And in the process of commuting, you expend energy, you grow your GDP because corporate and individual citizens will be contributing by making sure they comply with their civic responsibilities of taxes and levies. But in the context of Nigeria now, it is not because of the global crisis that uh, we are having problems now. We are having problems because we refuse to plan. And I will tell you, when you look at the global, I mean the Ukraine-Russian crisis, which a lot of people believe, was is the principal cause of this tectonic global concern. I agree. Because when you talk about OPEC, OPEC is a special cartel for crude oil. OPEC is led by Saudi Arabia. When you go to non-OPEC members, the non-OPEC members are being led by Russia. And that means Russia has good volume of, of, of crude oil. The only gas exporting countries with headquarters in in, in Doha, Qatar, you know, Russia is also a very strong member of gas exporting countries forum. So let us discuss Nigeria now. Mm. And this is why I said in the case of Nigeria, it's lack of visionary leaders or lack of good advisors for our leaders. The reason why I'm saying so is because as these crises are lingering now, energy crisis, all 
all the Boyan producing nations are smiling. They are dancing, they are celebrating. Oil and gas producing nations that have refineries are dancing and smiling. The only countries that may not necessarily be smiling may be countries that are oil producing, but because of their size or industrial activities, they do not have enough crude oil and natural gas to process within their country to provide them energy. But in the case of Nigeria, yes. looking at our endowment of crude oil and gas, we are supposed to be dancing and celebrating. But because of short-sightedness, we refuse to put gas infrastructures in place. And okay. now we are paying for it. Because of lack of foresight, because of role models, we refuse to fix our refineries. Okay. And that let, is why I said, yes, there yeah. is global energy concern. But in the case of Nigeria, it is due to having visionless uh, economic leaders or wrong advisors that have led our leaders into the economic lagoon. Mm. Oh, okay, so, so but with the way it is, I mean, the uh, implications are on us, uh, no doubt about that. But how do you think Nigerian government is responding to the implications that this will bring upon the economy. Um, I mean, well, how well is the government handling it? Are, are there alternatives? Because what is happening is across the strata of, 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 of the globe, especially for countries that do not have sufficient crude oil or natural gas endowments. I will want to, for this, in this context now, suggest or tell the government anything they can do to bring soccer, they should do that. But mm -hmm. I want them to also understand that it was because of lack of planning. Because if we have been proactive, we wouldn't have been caught in the way. Maybe economy, some of our economic leaders and political leaders may be surprised by being caught. But for me, I'm not surprised. Because I knew that the last time we constructed a refinery was like 32 years ago. So I didn't need anybody to tell me that we will run into energy crisis. Even if we haven't had a tectonic movement at, as a result, a, a, a distortion as a result of the Russia-Ukraine crisis. Because you're talking about 32 years. You didn't see, uh, I mean, take care of the refineries we inherited. You didn't construct new ones. Even when we went into democracy from 1999 to now, you are talking about 23 years. Even if it means constructing one refinery in a year. We would have had like two refiners, and just imagine with this energy crisis, just imagine if we were those sub supplying refined petroleum products in West African sub-region, mm. to, to, to even the continent of Africa, because that is what other countries that have coal, oil, and gas are doing. But in this case now, because we are in difficulties, I, I, I would want to, to be in solidarity with the government to do anything humanly possible to right. cushion the economic pains of the citizens. Mm. But now, let me quickly but come in. Yes. Note, just a moment. We are the architect of our, our calamities. Mm. I mean, Nigeria spent about 4.56 trillion around the importation of premium motor spirit uh, between last year and now. That's about 128% higher uh, than what was spent on diesel uh, tw in 2020. Now, you all talked about the fact that we have not built a refinery in the last 32 years. 32 years. And, and, yes. and the government, I understand that the government has also talked about the fact that these other refineries have to be rehabilitated. Now, what are the options here? To build a new one, to refine uh, lo uh, you know, uh, locally, and then, of course, to continue to import. So how do we, because the consequences are here. If we are to look at the long term, of course, you can say, okay, you want to build a refinery and that will address it. But within the, 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 the immediate term, what can be done? Should we continue to import? Uh, what can be done or rehabilitate the ones that we have? Well, thank you for, for those excellent questions, sir. Because we, are, we have been caught unaware, for those who have not been watching, not people like me, what the government needs to do, they have no option than 
that 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 to keep importing now, whatever it will cost. Because the reason why they need to import now is because if they don't do, there will be energy crisis. Can't you see what is happening to the national grid? Is there electricity? The national grid has collapsed countless number of times. Okay. This is why when people are saying remove subsidies and build infrastructure, I said the first thing you need after security is energy. Can you go and build hospitals and there is no energy or electricity to run the hospitals? How can you carry out uh, your operations and other activities? If you don't have energy, will you go and, and construct schools or establish schools? What will you be using in the lab? If you don't have energy, even if you float companies, fertilizer plant, chemical plant, and factories, what will you use to drive them? So I feel very, very surprised and disturbed when I hear some people saying, if you remove subsidy on petrol, you use it to put infrastructures. Petrol is energy. If you remove it, what infrastructure? Will you want to build school? Will you want to build hospital? Will you want to build sports stadium? If there is no energy to run those places, what will be the, the, the use of those infrastructures? People All right, we have uh, Mr. Bala Zakat back on the phone now. Thank you for your time. Yes, uh, let, let's uh, continue on this conversation and look at, of course, the volume of, of, of consumption of uh, premium motor spirit, uh, diesel and of course gas. These are various uh, by I mean products uh, of energy here. And, and and so how do you think we can meet the demand, the daily consumption of all of these commodities, specifically, especially those uh, who use this product to run their businesses on industries. So please talk to us about that. Okay. Uh, before, uh, before I do that, let me talk about uh, diesel, kerosene, and aviation fuel. Mm. Diesel, kerosene, and aviation fuel have had their prices deregulated, and we have seen the consequences. I'm happy that the government of this country decided to remove the incentives. You can see what has happened. Because of the removal of subsidy in, in, in the price of diesel, so many sectors have collapsed. Even their studio, banks now close. Some some banks close and close at at twelve noon. Some close at one o'clock. Some close at two o'clock. Strategic industrial sectors, whether commercial or domestic or uh, the other or other sectors, have all collapsed. And as they are collapsing like this, they are also firing staff. So because they cannot break even. Their company income tax will go down this year. And because they are firing staff, they will not be able to contribute. Uh, there will be no personal income tax. Because when you fire staff, if there are no people who pay salary, there will be no personal income tax. But let me talk about the volume consumption of PMS also. But before I even say that, on the aviation, you can see what is happening. There are flight cancellations everywhere. They are searching staff and they are mass and, and flight delays. So who, 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 let anybody point out one thing. Have we been able to generate money because we removed subsidy in the price of diesel? Let them show how many hospitals we have built. Have they been able to get money from the removal of subsidy in the price of diesel to pay ASU? Have they been able to pay pensioners? So what has been the benefit? Go to kerosene. We were told that we shouldn't cut firewood, you know, because there will be that. People, our parents and our communities, they stopped cutting firewood. They were hoping to get gas. There is no gas. They cannot afford kerosene. So they have gone back to firewood and are now contributing to global warming. So who is that person that will come out and justifiably tell us one benefit of removal of, 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 of uh, subsidy in the price of, uh, of kerosene? There is not. So the only product remaining now is petrol and they are still insisting meanwhile they cannot point out one thing that they have done with mm, the removal okay. of something in the price of petrol diesel and kerosene okay. and the reason yeah. why the volume of consumption of petrol is high now is because uh, uh, something is happening is because people cannot afford diesel and they need to run generators to generate energy 
So mm. tell anybody who cares to listen that I, Zaka Bala, Obala, Zaka said, what we need after security is energy, not infrastructures. Because people will say remove price, I mean, the subsidy in the price of, of petrol and, and get infrastructures. Okay. What okay. infrastructures will you put in place if there is no energy? Okay. It is energy first before infrastructures. All right. And let me control people are buying this to generate energy mm. for the hairdressers, the barbers, the salon operators, and so many companies also. Mm. Let's wrap up with this one, Mr. Zaka. Uh, is there an end in sight? I mean, or is the country helpless? There is no help coming in the way of of Nigeria at the moment. Yeah, because um, it's it's evident that uh, this will likely continue for a very long time. It's a pre-election year, so can we say there's hope uh, in the coming days, or is for there no Niger hope? For, for mm. Nigeria, the only way this short short term uh, measure is to just import. We have no option. Mm. And you see, one mistake again people are doing is this. You cannot compare us with countries of 20, 000, 20 million population, uh, 30 million, 50 million. We are a country of 200 million citizens, relying on less than 10,000 megawatts of electricity. Mm -hmm. So when people are saying you can manage, no, there is no way a country of 200 million citizens will be relying on importation. Of products. So, like you said, we are in pre election year. What we need to do now, it is a God given opportunity for us to question the new set of Nigerian leaders. Let us, during their campaign, ask them, What are you planning to do with energy? They should tell us in concrete terms, What are you planning to do with our natural gas? What are you planning to do with our crude oil? What are you planning to do with our refineries? Because this is the right time to ask them those questions. Don't forget that leaders are people that we are going to hand over our economic, social, and political destiny into their hands right. to manage okay. for us. So they need to answer those questions in national interest. Yeah, it's all right. I think we have to leave it there. Thank you so much for your time. Always available when we, whenever we call you. Thank you. Balaz Zakai is a petroleum engineer and chartered accountant. We appreciate your time on Business Breakfast. Thank you and God bless our country. I'm still hopeful. It's all right.